I think that we have now seen the defense take their best shot. We have the advantage of hindsight. We know exactly where they're going. There are no more surprises. There is no medical evidence whatsoever to corroborate the claim of the defendants. There are no eyewitnesses. So how can they really say that the defendants are telling the truth concerning the allegations? Back in uh, the 1970s, uh, would you say that uh, the medical community was as aware of or as sensitive to uh, the problems of sexual abuse of children as they are now? No. Did you see any um, indication in uh, Eric Menendez's medical records of uh, an injury to his uh, throat area? Yes. Okay. May I approach Your Honor with Exhibit 299? Yes. Thank you. Exhibit 299 appears to be some typewritten medical records uh, about Eric Menendez. Does that document uh, indicate that there was an, an injury to the throat of Eric Menendez sometime in 1977? Yes. Okay, and, and what, what specifically does the medical record indicate was injured? Uh, her, the direct quote is her posterior pharynx, uvula, and soft palate. Uh, senior emergency room, Princeton Medical Center. Okay. Healing well, symptomatic treatment. Actually, it was seen the day before. And this is the follow-up note. Okay. Now, is there um, is is the report of injury in that medical record? that's before you is 299. Is that consistent with, uh, or that, could that be caused by child sexual abuse, in your opinion? Yes, could be. And, and what, do you have any opinion as to what type of child sexual abuse could have resulted in that particular complaint? Uh, oral copulation. <clears throat> okay. Um, in examining Eric Menendez in August of 1993, uh, did you notice that he had uh, a scar on his left inner knee? Yes. And did that appear to be a, <clears throat> a wound that had been unsutured, that it is, it had gone untreated, unstitched? Yes. May I, I just have a moment, Your Honor? Any examination yes. on behalf of Lyle Menendez? Were there any um, physical findings at all on physical inspection, not only of the anal area, but any place else on the body? There were a few nonspecific scars, and there was one scar on the uh, lower lip that appeared to be a non-sutured scar. Could that scar on the lower lip have been caused by someone punching someone in the face? That, that is what Lyle uh, related to me as the cause of the scar, yes. And did you also take a, a medical history from him concerning uh, sexual abuse by his father? Yes. Did you also review the testimony that he gave here in this trial concerning the sexual abuse that had been perpetrated on him by his father when he was approximately six to eight years of age? Yes, I did. Was the testimony that he gave to the jury consistent with what he told you about the sexual abuse? Yes. Is there an inconsistency between the no. absence of findings of no. anal trauma and his testimony and his report to you of a history of sexual abuse? No, there's no inconsistency. You talk about unsutured. Could you describe what you mean by that? Uh, well, I, I misspoke. It was an unsutured scar. Of course, uh, it was a scar that appeared never to have been sutured, from a laceration that had never been sutured. Did you, in addition to examining Lyle Menendez, also review his medical records? Yes. And did those medical records span a period from approximately March of 1971 to July of 1970, July of 1989? Yes. Uh, was there anything remarkable about the medical history in terms of uh, findings that were made by other physicians that you reviewed? Well, there were uh, a significant number of uh, physician visits. Right. Um, 
let me ask more. Civic, significant number of records of physician visits, right. I should say. Did you see uh, in the medical mm -hmm. history uh, certain injuries which had been uh, treated by other physicians? Yes. For instance, was there uh, an indi indication that when Lyle Menendez was three years old on March 9, 1971, that he had a uh, injury sutured as a result of a, a dog biting him in the face? Yes, I recall that, I believe. And do you recall in 1974 there was a report of an injury to a uh, hematoma to the left side of his face? Uh, yes. And in the same year, 1974, when he was six years old, a report of an injury of a one and a half laceration to his right eyebrow? Yes. Was there also a history that he had what's called an epigastric hernia when he was seven years old? Yes. What is that? It's a uh, failure of the muscles of the abdomen to completely, uh, to be completely contiguous so that a uh, small part of bowel uh, comes out between the muscles, essentially. Right. And did the medical history also include a history in August of 1976 of a speech articulation disorder and below grade level school performance? Yes. Did it also include uh, an entry on August 4th, 1978 that he grinds his teeth? I believe, I don't remember the exact date of the gr teeth grinding, but I remember the teeth grinding. And were there also, um, was there also a report in 19, uh, October 28th, 1976 of stomach pains? Yes. And on March 7th, 1977, global headaches? Yes. Uh, was there also a report? various reports from 1979 uh, to 1989 of uh, complaints of headaches? Yes. Would any doctor looking at that full range of symptoms been alerted to the possibility of sexual abuse just looking at this medical history if it was all presented at once? Objection, 